look it's pretty daunting when you start this hobby and there's just so many paints to choose from and you seem to need a, need a degree in chemistry to get started look I'm gonna give a quick overview here I'm not gonna go full in depth if you're first of all if you're really knowledgeable on paints skip ahead okay I'll put a marker up there to tell you uh, when I'm gonna start playing around with actual paint if you want to dive in even further I'm gonna leave another link for Will Patterson's video he goes into it for well you know very very deep into exactly what's in all these paints first of all every type of paint has a pigment that's the color okay that's the color that gives it green or blue or what have you all right next they've got a binder now this keeps all the pigments together and it also lends to the sort of finish you're gonna have it's gonna be a flat finish or a gloss finish that depends on that binder and then the third thing is all that stuff that goop is then suspended in a solvent that makes it into an actual brushable or airbrushable paint and that's usually how paint manufacturers categorize or advertise or market that particular type of paint but sometimes they cross the line and they get make us confused they call a lacquer paint an acrylic and they call an enamel acrylic or what have you there's five basic types of paints let me just reorganize this area here and I'll show you through the five different types the first ones to look at are the water-based acrylics the pigment is acrylic but the solvent is a water you got uh, Vallejo model color and life color uh, brushable paints just one of their rust ones uh, these are fantastic for brushing let's leave them aside because they're not very good for airbrushing you can airbrush life color you can airbrush the Vallejo air style but there's better paints on the market let's go to the next one the next type of acrylic is a alcohol based acrylic these the pigment is acrylic just like the water based one but the solvent is an alcohol in this case the Tamiya X and XF series F means flat it's basically the solvent is butanol uh, yeah, it's an alcohol and that's why it gives it that nice lovely smell this is sometimes called a hybrid because you can actually solve or thin it with a lacquer based thinner okay fantastic paints Tamiya paints are great they don't have a huge amount of colors but you can you can mix what you want and they're coming out with new ones all the time now the last type of acrylic paint yes these are still acrylics because the pigment remains acrylic but the solvent is lacquer the secrets in the name lacquer paint this is Tamiya's new LP lacquer paint series which is going to be what I'm talking about mainly in this video and you got the old mr. hobby mr. color these are very toxic they um, but they spray absolutely beautifully and they're exactly what we're going to be uh, I'm going to be mixing and spraying very shortly I'll show you some other examples you've got the lovely MRP mr. paint which is ready to go in the bottle you got the Australian SMS again bloody fantastic paint okay coming out with a huge range and there's some older type of lacquer paints like the Alclad 2s which are usually the metallics so that's three types of paints there are two more to talk about but they use completely different pigments these are enamels this is Tamiya's uh, panel line wash and AK's enamel wash there's plenty of other ones out there the enamel, enamel is again it's a different type of pigment it's a different type of solvent that's used you need uh, usually odorless thinners or um, some sort of white spirit I'll probably get that wrong but anyway for the purposes of this video we're not going to use this but I wanted to cover it you might also come across the old Humbrol and Ravel enamels that's really old school not really suitable for airbrushing all right the last type of paint that we use as modelers are traditional oils the oldest type of paint you can get the pigment is completely different it's a natural sometimes or well, sometimes they make synthetic pigment but it's a completely different pigment completely different binder completely different uh, solvent usually linseed oil uh, it's you know you've got these ammo oil brushes which is basically just a very thin version of this these are basically artist paints these are perfect for weathering and changing the tones and values of your airbrushed paint not for airbrushing so we won't cover them today how do you get started well obviously we need an airbrush so I'm going to use my Hutter and Steenbeck Infinity and a compressor which is off screen of course I'll show you the dials on that a bit later we need some paint right Tamiya lacquer paint I'm going to use the flat black okay and the two I'm going to try a couple of these as most people have got some Tamiya paint this is while it's called an acrylic as I mentioned before if you didn't catch the intro these are hybrids they have an alcohol based solvent however you can use a lacquer based thinner and that's what we're going to use throughout the whole video let's talk about thinners now Tamiya does sell a acrylic thinner this stuff the X20A not very durable not very hardy 
and in my view it only has one purpose and that's for the air, uh, hairspray technique I'll discuss that in another video so we're not going to use an acrylic thinner we're going to use a lacquer based thinner now Tamiya does make its own lacquer thinner but everybody uses this stuff Mr. Color Leveling Thinner or MLT uh, the 400 only means it's in a 400 mil bottle okay it's also called unicorn tears <laughs> I put some into a little dropper bottle here so I can uh, ease it out as, as easy as I can it's got a, sm a slight smell to it a slight uh, perfume or whatever so you can tell the difference between that and the other type of thinner which is this one straight hardware like in Australia your local Bunnings uh, anywhere in the world basic lacquer thinner again I put it into a into a dropper bottle and this is going to be my cleaner not my thinner okay all right I want to go just a little bit further in depth with the mr. leveling thinner and why we use it and why it's so important for, for lacquer paint airbrush painting what makes this superior to say for example the x20a which is an alcohol based thinner it's basically just got this isoprol alcohol in it and some other things in it and there is a Tamiya equivalent product, I'll put it up here. I've, I've never used it, but I've been told it's identical to this one. And it's the orange capped um, Tamiya lacquer thinner, which has, basically has some of this in it. It's a retarder, okay? So a retarder and flow improver help smooth out the flow of paint. And that's what makes the Mr. Leveling Thinner such a fantastic uh, thinner for our lacquer paints, is because it dries relatively quickly, but you get a very smooth finish. So that's why we use that instead of the more uh, sort of the cellulose based lacquer based you know store brand thinner this one and why we use instead of using the the alcohol base which gives a good finish but it's nowhere near as good as this one mixing tools here's the thing you shouldn't mix your paint inside your airbrush you should do it outside so let's put that aside for now grab yourself a few of these little ink cups these are what the tattoo artists use to mix their paints okay and they're a perfect size for us because we can and we can also reuse them. You just use a little bit of that lacquer thinner at the end to clean them all up. But, you know, 100 of these is a couple of dollars. Easy. You also need a few of these little pipettes, these little 3 mil pipettes, so you can get it out of your paint bottle and just very easily put it in. Finally, you need a stirring stick. Uh, get the Tamiya one. I think they come in a pair. This one's really nice and dirty. I should clean it. And that leads me to, you know, you can clean out these and reuse them. But, you know, all this stuff's pretty cheap to use. And why do it in the airbrush when you can do it out of the way? Okay, you can mix these, put them aside, instead of having an open paint bottle, and it's a lot safer and it's a lot cleaner. The next thing we need is some cleaning tools, because we have to clean as we go, and clean when we finish our airbrush. Alright, as I said before, just general store brand lacquer thinner. You don't need to use the Unicorn Tears, the Mr. Leveling Thinner, or the Tamiya stuff. Just use this stuff. It's cheap as, does the same job. A couple of cotton buds or Q-tips, very old brush, and the ubiquitous paper towel. Now the last thing you need and you absolutely must use is safety equipment. All right, these are lacquer based paints and solvents. They are very toxic, do not breathe them in. You need either a combination or all three of a nice airflow in your room. I've got my window open here to outside, an extractor fan and a respirator, okay? I know these were hard to come by last year. And some gloves because you, know, you don't wanna get this sort of paint on your fingers and, and lick your fingers and so forth. So invest in one of these that I know they're a bit cumbersome and they're a bit, bit of a pain, but it'll save your lungs and your throat. I like to get in the habit of mixing my paint outside my airbrush for a lot of reasons. I touched on them before, but the main one is if you dump paint without any solvent straight into your airbrush, the pigments in here will clog up, will just settle to the bottom and they'll clog up. And that's where you get your sputtering. You ever get that sort of sputtering sort of won't just start? Well, that's the reason why. Do it outside, thin it to a proper ratio first. Okay, and then I'll show you another trick that'll help stop the splutter in a minute. If you keep up this bad habit and you're changing colours in between, what you'll get is older paint will clog up your airbrush and you were hoping to shoot blue and green comes out instead or you're hoping to shoot white and grey comes out. So be a bit more disciplined, mix it outside. This is a very cheap method to do so. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of drops of my Mr. Leveling Thinner Unicorn Tears into my cup. Alright, three drops. Time to add some paint. Now the lacquer paint actually doesn't clog up as much as the, the hybrid paints, the X series, but we need to give this a good shake and a, and a good stir. 
I'm shaking it. I'm opening it. Let's have a look what it's like. Okay. Give it a good stir with our stirring stick. That's actually pretty good. I can't feel any pigments down the bottom. It's not bad. Now you can cheat here and you can actually do your drops off the edge of your, of your stirring stick like that, as long as they're consistent. Okay. But I'll use the pipette just to show you. All right, we get our pipette. One, two, three. Shoot the rest back in there. And this is the important bit. Put the lid back on your paint, put it away. So if you knock anything over, you're only going to knock over that little cup. Get out our stirring stick. Give it a nice stir. And we're done. Okay? So much easier to do it outside the airbrush than inside. Now, most airbrushes come with a removable cup, and there's no reason when we're just doing little bits here, when we're just trying uh, to experiment with our paints, why well, we have to always use the cup, because you have to clean it. So I take, take it off, put it aside. All right, to stop that spluttering to start with, the best thing to do, just add one or two drops in here. Like that. Okay, give it a shot. That lubricates it, gives it a little bit of the lacquer thinner already. Yep, there we go, it's all gone now. It's a little bit wet. Let's get our paint. Simply pour it in. So this reduces the possibility that the pigments are going to settle straight away. And there we are, we're ready to go. Well, let's see how this sprays. Let's go. This is just straight 50-50. I'll do a test on the paper first. I'm shooting at 20 PSI. I'll just double check. Yep. 20 PSI, let's go, getting nice smooth lines there, I'll just get closer, okay, it's pretty good to start with there, I can get some very fine lines, let's go on to plastic, here's my T34, and you can see on that, there's a lot of texture on that plastic there, but you can see I'm getting Pretty good, I'm not getting any splatter. We'll go on a more flatter surface here and see what happens. That's pretty good. It's a bit soft. And I can control it really well. What this ratio is good for is getting some coverage down, so getting some large areas. So I'll just spray on the side of the tank here, straight flat black. And that's pretty much drying just after I put it down. You can see it's disappearing already. I'm just spraying straight air here. And that is pretty much dry to the touch. Alright, I'm going to try to go even a bit thinner. We're going to try for a 2 to 1 ratio. So uh, 2 drops of thinner to 1 drop of paint, or we'll double it, 4 drops to 2. And that gives us a much thinner paint to control with. So let's mix it up. Okay, we're getting a very thin, thin mix there. Very opaque. Should be nice and thin. Let's see how it shoots. Alright, for this demonstration I've got a piece of plastic card here that I've just primed with a little bit of brown so you can see the black a bit better and a bit of masking tape I'll do some offhand stuff first with the two to one and then we'll do on the masking tape so here we go so you can see with it's quite thin paint let's just try some better lines here I can control that a lot better with just freehand. It looks very thin, but you can build up the, the opacity. With the freehand, you're getting a nice feathered edge there. It's okay. You can it's quite stark with the black. We'll just try it with a with a masked edge. Now this is thin enough that I shouldn't have to mask beneath this area for overspray.
Now it's quite thin. That's it's might be a bit thinner than I expected. So let's let that dry. So the tip with mask with spraying over masking tape is always spray away from the edge you want to do it, not the other way, so you don't get any bleed. I'm just shooting air now just to dry it off. Another light coat. Bit of a wet coat there. Alright, let's see what we get. Take the mask off. And we get a nice clean line there. That should be dry to the touch. Yep, perfectly dry. Nothing on the finger. This is what makes lacquer paint so much easier to control than acrylics. And even when they're super thin, but that's a really, that's a smooth as finish. You don't even need to put a gloss coat on that if you're doing decals or anything. It's fine as. I'm going to use the same process with these ones that I did with the straight lacquer paints. I'm going to start with a ratio of one is to one. And I'll just show you the difference with these paints is the binder they use leads to a much goopier finish. Okay, if you fill this up with uh, thinner, which I've heard some people do, it breaks down the binder and you just it, the, the paint won't last as long. So don't do that. Yes, it's a pain having to, to, to stir and get this paint all ready to go every time, but hey, it doesn't take that long. So Let's just get this all ready. The first thing we need to do is shake the devil out of it, devil out of it as someone used to say. Yeah, you can use other techniques to do this, but I find just giving it a good shake. Use your, your whatever your strong hand is, and then you need to give it a mighty good stir. So get out that stirring stick again, and we want to give this a really good stir. Getting drips off the edge of the stirring stick nice and freely, that means to me that there's enough of good paint there to, to get started with. Let's put a few drops of thinner in first. One, two, three. Get out pipette. One, two, three. Put the lid on, put this away. All right, I've got my paint ready. I've got my trusty T34 paint mule here, and I've got some dark yellow. Let's do some do some spraying. Uh, the PSI is, yep, it's at 20. Let's go. Just gonna do some freehand. As you can see, that's nice and silky smooth. I'm just building up the layers there, I'll just fill in this engine hatch and that's drying right in front of me it's about 25 degrees here ok, as you can see, we're getting a nice soft edge here, there's a little bit of splatter it's not, it's a feathered edge, it's not hard edge at all so this shows that uh, this one to one ratio is it's not enough for freehand work, but it's really good for putting a base down I'll just show you, it's um, and in fact, I use this one-to-one -one all the time for doing uh, cockpits. So instead of getting out a primer, I just mix whatever the base cockpit color is and just spray it down. Because this is really durable, really good. You get a nice, beautiful, smooth finish. Okay, just get that dry off. But yeah, we can do better. All right, we're going to go a bit thin. I'm going to try two to one. I've already got six drops of my unicorn tears in my cup. I'm just going to grab a bit more of the dark yellow. And I'm just going to do two drops. One, two. Two to one ratio. I've got a bit of masking tape here. And I'm going to try a bit of freehand first in front and see how we go.
Now that is much more controllable and much more opaque. So yeah, obviously the thinner you go, the better this gets. But that is a really nice if you're doing a freehand camo on a German tank. So that's a much finer line. You can't really see it that well. I'm going to switch to the tank in a minute, but let's just finish off this little demonstration and I'll show you how we're going to look over that masking tape. So again, spray on the other side of the tape so we don't get any bleed. And when you're spraying across something like that, don't stop when you get to the edge, actually spray over the edge. That way you won't get any bleed on the edges as well. Just letting that dry, we'll do another pass. One of the secrets of spraying oh, any paints really, but lacquer paints, particularly because they're thin, don't just wash it all on at once. Don't hose it on like you normally would with a base coat. We're, we're building up the layers, okay? That'll probably do it. And there we are, we've got a really lovely finish. Pretty dry. Nice and smooth. Now, one of the advantages of using uh, lacquer paint and lacquer thinner on these hybrid paints is if you're controlled with the use of it outside of the brush and you're mixing it outside, you can quite easily change colors on the go. Uh, I'll sometimes have three or four of those little tattoo ink cups sitting on my bench and I'll be switching in between one airbrush or even two airbrushes. Not a problem at all. So don't be daunted by, oh, this is going to take forever to clean. So let's just assume we're painting a two-tone camera scheme with the yellow first and then, which is lighter than the green next. And I've got some yellow paint still stuck in my airbrush and I want to paint green next. What do I do? I grab my, my airbrush holder and I first just dump whatever's left. There it goes, it's all gone. Then I grab my store brand lacquer thinner, cellulose thinner, and fill it up. As you can see, there's still a little bit of paint in there, so we give it another flush. All done. Okay, at this stage what I do is I just back the airbrush needle out a little bit, and we fill it up again. This time I grab an old brush and we give it a bit of a clean. And because I'm using this without the cup, I've got to do the rim, but let's just assume that I've got, got my cup on. What I normally do in this circumstance is I just put a little bit more in there. So it's actually inside the cup. Okay. Give it a nice old stir. And you guessed it, yep, so there's still a little bit of paint in there. Give it another flush. Okay. Push that needle forward. And we should be ready to go. That should be clean enough. It's not a, it's not a full strip clean. You might want to give it a, just a little bit of a, a dab there. There might be a bit of paint left with a Q-tip or the cotton bud. We're right to go. So I grab my next paint. Got my green. Tip it in, give it a few shots, it's perfectly green. That's how you clean the airbrush and change colours on the fly. Well there we go, a basic look at how to get into airbrushing lacquer paints. I hope this helps you get started through the minefield that is painting in this hobby. Uh, I really hope you've learned something from the video. Please don't hesitate to ask a question below in the comment section, or perhaps you want to suggest another video on a deeper or the next topic when it comes to painting. Leave a like if it's helped you out and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I really like to focus on the painting and weathering on models and I try to put out a video once or twice a week. So until next time, happy modeling. Cheers.